I hear you're a great fan of uh, the work of uh, James Baldwin. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about um, why you love Baldwin and any other literary influences? Yeah, um, James Baldwin uh, <laughs> means a lot to me. Not only was a great writer in reinventing what his writing is, but also he had this great ability that and it's what I, I'm trying to do and what Kenzie is doing. Like Baldwin has, has this thing of always trying to put things together, to understand things together. So the, the clash issue, the racial issue, uh, the issue of gender, and it was very avant-garde because now everybody is talking about intersectionality and all the stuff and, and, and good for us. But at that time, he was really trying, you know, this, this black working class gay man um, <laughs> escaping the United States because of racism mostly and because of homophobia also. Uh, he, he really tried to put all those things together. And, and for me, it's a, an endless source of, 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 of inspiration. In, in, in Who Killed My Father, I said at, at some point that my father is, all, is poor because of social violence, because of economic violence, but also because of, of masculinity. Because for him in his childhood to, to build his masculine identity meant to reject the school system. He, he left school very, very early at a very young age um, because it was a performance of his masculinity. It was to show the, to the entire world and he was, he was trapped in it. It was not as if it was a decision. But, but you see that also fighting against masculine domination is also a way of fighting against class domination and, and, and class violence. And this is like... It would have not been possible without people like James Baldwin, who before anyone else really tried to put all these things together. And if you talk about um, sexuality or gender, you already talk about class in a way. And when you talk about class, you, you talk about gender and sexuality, I think so. <laughs> so yeah, I, I love him so much. <laughs> I work for a trade union. We were able to combat racism and homophobia on the factory floor. Mm -hmm. and the whole attack of Thatcherism was to take that community away mm. and was to be able to put people into precarious work and to take away the role of the union rep. Mm. I just kind of ask you if you think there's maybe a link in regards to the decline of the trade union movement in communities mm. um, and the rise in the far right. I mean, I, I, I tend to agree with you. Um, and I think also that we are gregarious people. I mean, we. we it, we like to be in a group. You know, the, the comedy of being in a team and taking the mickey out of someone and having it taken out of yourself, that's the joy of, part of the joy of living, isn't it? And absolutely it needs, um, it needs trade unions. Um, and that again, because that's our collective strength. And as you say, we, we have to make certain they're really responsive and, and they are, they, they do f fight for, you know, the, the good things. Their structure's got to be democratic because we're all familiar with the trade unions. They call them trade union bosses, which is a term I hate because they do have to be elected. And at the moment, we've got trade unions in the Labour Party. The leader will make a very left-wing speech and then there's delegates of the various organisations will vote for the right wing, you know. We've got to cut those out so the trade unions actually represent the interests of the members.